While some now take the advent of flying themselves, or even freight, across the continent via air travel to their next destination as a routine endeavour, the accessibility of routes and even pricing of flights still proves to be prohibitive to many in Africa. With the challenges identified, the introduction of the single African air transport market is heralded as a new era for African aviation that will play a pivotal role not only in connecting Africa, but in turn supporting economic, social and political integration across the continent. The single African air transport market is one of the flagship projects of Agenda 2063, with its goal being to create a single, unified air transport market for Africa, thereby liberalising the civil aviation sector across the whole continent and aiding the economic integration agenda. While the decision to liberalise the air market in Africa is not a new one, African states did adopt the Yamasukra decision in 1999, yet nearly two decades after, the renewed impetus for the single African air transport market was spearheaded by the 2015 Declaration of African Heads of State and Government, in which they reaffirmed their commitment to realise the agreement. As a first step, we launched the single African air transport market January 2018 as the first project of Agenda 2063 to be launched. Uh, up to today, we have 33 member states that already have signed this document uh, and they committed themselves really to, to open the sky for different uh, companies uh, really to, uh, to ensure the business among the countries and uh, today uh, 18, bilat 18 member states have signed also the bilateral agreement on the implementation specifically on the ground. Uh, this will, will give a huge opportunity to passengers, but also to the entire continent. Uh, as we know, uh, many sectors are really interlinked with uh, civil aviation, but also the business in general. And uh, this will also um, help us to implement this uh, CFTA uh, as a uh, as enabler for CFTB or for CFTA to be implemented, but also. Uh, to uh, implement also another flagship project of Agenda 2063, which is uh, free movement of person and goods. In the 1960s, many newly independent African nations created their own national airlines to assert sovereignty and statehood status. However, the realization was that this strict regulatory protection also inflated airfares, stifled air traffic, and even had detrimental effects on safety. Today, Africa, which is home to 12% of the global population, still accounts for less than 1% to 2% of the global air service market. With aviation being a critical economic enabler, the need to increase access and connectivity to Africa's airspace becomes all the more imperative. The evolution from the Yamasukra decision to the single African air transport market has its roots in the foresight of the African Union and is also supported by international aviation institutions. IATA noticed uh, since uh, 2014 that uh, the African Union's um, decision to open up the African air transport market was not gaining traction. Uh, be, simply because a lot of countries signed the Yamosukro decision, but Im implementation was becoming an issue. So what IATA then did was to say, how can we use our global expertise to actually assist Africa to push forward with implementation and opening up of the market? So we identified that for the 12 countries, if air transport were to be liberalized amongst them, an additional 155,000 new jobs will be created. 1.3 billion will be added to the GDPs of the 12 countries. And it would make travel much more easier, cost effective, and make it competitive. So based on this, then we said, okay, let's take this information to the African Union, to African Civil Aviation Commission, and the states involved, and let them really see what they are constraining their countries off by not implementing the Yamosukro decision. 
The implementation of the single African air transport market, including full liberalization of services in terms of access, capacity and frequency, also include freedom rights for passengers and freight services by eligible airlines. Equally, liberalized tariffs and fair competition practices will herald a new era in the aviation sphere. However, the benefits of the agreement are not limited only to airborne services and practices, as the single African air transport market has ramifications on the ground that will play a major role in Africa's integration and economic harmonization. Enhancing air connectivity will increase productivity by encouraging investment and innovation and improving business operations and efficiency. Unfortunately, taxes and the fees of uh, and tickets in general are very expensive in our continent. So if you open for uh, transparency, if you open for concurrence between this company, you will uh, improve the service, but you, you will also uh, reduce the cost of tickets. So it is very clear. The second element is uh, if you reduce the ticket and you improve the, the, the services and environment in general, you improve also the movement of person. And behind this movement of person, you have business. And uh, we are expecting that uh, we will at least have an additional 3 million creation of jobs once we implement this, fully we implement this single African air transport market across the continent. Currently, 33 countries have committed and signed to the single African air transport market. The total populations of these countries combined is over 600 million. The implementation of the agreement outside of the aviation sector into tourism, trade, economic and political development also have a broader contextual reach within the AU Agenda 2063 roadmap and the recent AFCFTA signing. We cannot today, for example, talk about the free movement if we don't have uh, enough infrastructure and we, we don't have enough policies and regulations that are really managing this infrastructure. And one of those aspects is exactly the aviation as infrastructure. I think it is, it is very clear. Uh, then, uh, if you reduce the cost of tickets and you reduce the fees related to travel in general, across the continent, you systematically will, will uh, encourage people to visit other African countries. And there is a need very clearly to also to facilitate all issues related to visa, all issues related to the movement of person, systematically. I think uh, this link is very, is very obvious. If you look at some of the issues that affect intra-Africa trade, have to do with the uh, logistics, uh, issues of transport, as well as uh, how do you move goods from one point of the continent to the other, and how easy can you do that. So SATAM is coming in at a beautiful time when Africa is actually at the verge of implementing the African continent of free trade earlier. So what that means is that uh, this project on SATAM is very complementary because it's going to enhance the movement of goods across the continent. At the same time, it's also going to enhance our trading services, which is very important. Either people going to consume a service abroad, uh, like going out for tourism, and at the same time, it also involves people going to deliver a service in another country. So Satnam is coming in at this right and uh, uh, brilliant time because it's going to enhance the free movement of people. So I would say that uh, this is a welcome development and uh, at, at the African Union Commission, we were looking forward to having more countries participate in the Satnam project, to join this project, to join this single air transport market. While the coronavirus pandemic has ground to a halt the global aviation industry, endeavours such as the single African air transport market could prove an invaluable tool in insulating the region while the long road to recovery is underway. Well, uh, coronavirus is a global pandemic now and uh, the air transport sector globally is, is actually 
are suffering significantly. Uh, load factors have dropped and businesses have been cancelled. Africa is no exception. In the long run, yes, we expect the African single, single African air transport market to actually insulate and support African connectivity if even the international connectivity at some point is curtailed. The coalescing of the aviation sector into Agenda 2063 means a comprehensive framework of trade, people and free movement will have the ability of increased economic opportunity and activity across all parameters of the economic landscape. Examples from other regions and partners in building successfully integrated aviation transport sectors and markets are also valuable templates. The European Union in this regard is supporting the implementation of the single African air transport market, offering valuable insight and experience. Having witnessed the importance of these sectors in, in integrating Europe, we are very happy to share our experience. The African population is today approximately 17.5% of the world. Aviation counts 2-4% of the market. So obviously there is a huge need for, uh, for improvement there. Until a few years ago, almost every time you wanted to fly from one side to, of Africa to the other, you would have to go uh, via Europe. And um, obviously this adds cost, time and so forth. Recently there are, uh, there are emerging successes, uh, particularly the one in this country with Ethiopian Airlines, who has invested in becoming a hub for African transport and the benefits are visible to, uh, to all. Now I think the benefits are we would not have safety standards as we have in Europe if we were not integrating. Our member states would not have had the, the requirement to, in, to raise their standards unless there was a single market as an incentive. And this will happen also to Africa. So the possibility of looking at consumer protection standards, environmental standards, these are all high benefits great benefits that Africa could get. And this is even more important, obviously, in a continent that suffers a huge gap in infrastructure. So if you cannot travel by car, by railway, by ship from one point or the other, the airplane becomes the only uh, source of, of, uh, for you to move from one part to the other. So there is a, there is a huge gap in Africa, it's been reduced, and obviously this will become more and more important. And the benefits of a single market will be even greater than what we witness in Europe. Implementation of the agreement not only has its advantages for technical partnerships, but also for improving overall capacity of the aviation sector in Africa with multi-sector collaboration and promotion of African airline cooperation. In addition, increased competitiveness should also yield a direct cost benefit for African air travellers in terms of routes, costs and crucially also increase industry capacity in the aviation market through the harmonisation of procedures and training. We are training people among our countries on how to operate the market, on how to deal with dispute if there is any, and how to also to, to, to go and to before arbitration, how to go before them and how to advocate for themselves, on how to reduce the cost, on how to make them harmonized across the continent. So there is a lot of steps and in which in each of them, you, 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 you can uh, encounter on a daily basis also these challenges. I think uh, most important the political commitment is very high around this project. With the growth of the airline industry in Africa continuing, air transport currently supports 6.2 million jobs and 55.8 billion in African economic activity, making up 1.8% of all employment and 2.6% of all GDP in African countries. Airlines will be able to benefit from a regulatory framework that allows reciprocal connectivity across the continent. If we improve connectivity as a result of a single African air transport market, we are going to shorten travel times and reduce the cost of travel. Two, we are going to stimulate additional demand of getting more passengers to travel. Passengers who today are unable to travel because it is expensive to do so, okay? And 
Thirdly, we think that with an open air transport market on this continent, we are going to see many more airlines working together. The load factors, which currently are the Africa region, has the lowest average load factors of all the world aviation regions at about under 70%. So we expect to see that load factors will improve and by extension, airlines in Africa will begin to make money. Now, we also expect to see a growth in the number of people who will be directly and indirectly employed in the African markets. And the, most importantly, the continental free trade area, which uh, the AU is pushing, would actually be enhanced by improved connectivity. The single African air transport market represents an opportunity for the future of air transport in Africa to remove regulatory policy and financial barriers for future growth of the airline industry in order to access more routes, increase trade, tourism, and aid job creation. When successfully synthesized with the AFCFTA and the Free Movement Protocol, the single African air transport market will be a catalyst for a new, integrated Africa, supporting increased passenger goods and accelerating the continental development strategy. <laughs>